Jeez. Nay. Nay. Um, I don't like GDC because I feel like it's exploitative. I feel like basically it's kind of like a slave labor racket, right? They have a bunch of people prepare and deliver talks for free. Um, a lot of people spend a lot of time on those talks. And then they charge people exorbitant fees to get in to see the talks, like thousands of dollars, right? I mean, I don't know what a GDC pass costs, but I think like, you know, they range from something like five or seven hundred dollars to like fifteen hundred or something. I don't know. It's 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 way more than like seventy bucks or what it would cost to go to PAX, for example, right? It's like it's ten times that or more. Uh, which basically creates a huge barrier for people who don't have a lot of money. They can't get access to things. They record them, of course, and then they put them in the GDC vault so no one can see them, right? Um, so I have a huge problem with GDC. I think GDC is awful for the industry. And I feel like it would be much better if we had a conference that was um, designed more like the stream, which was like, okay, you can have some commercial aspect of your thing if you want to, but you should provide the learning materials to the community um, for free after the fact, uh, because these are people who are basically donating their time, right? These are people who um, are not getting paid to produce these lectures to produce the content. Like all GDC does is put up the venue, right? Like they don't actually produce content. Um, it's people who aren't getting paid uh, who get to produce the content. And it's crazy the arguments that I hear. It's like everyone's in this big like denial sphere, which is kind of common these days, right? Everyone loves to live in their like, no, everything we do is good and we shouldn't be self-critical about it. We should just be happy. Um, but like, that's not how things get better. So any of the disaster and they make up these excuses and like the common excuses are like, oh, but you get a free pass if you do a lecture at GDC. But that doesn't make any sense. It's like, that's like saying that a professor at a university shouldn't get paid because he gets to attend the university. It's like, what? It doesn't, it's, it, you wouldn't accept this ridiculous excuse anywhere else. Or like the person who goes to work at McDonald's shouldn't get paid because they get to have free McDonald's food while they're there. It's like, it's, it's absolutely ludicrous. And you wouldn't say it with a straight face about anything else. Um, and yet everyone lives in this, this reality warp where people like the GDC get away with it, but I don't think they should. I think basically they should either have to pay their speakers a lot of money, like basically like, you know, 30% or 40% or maybe 70%, let's say, if we, if we were modeling it after a standard model of the profit. Because let's put it this way, what do other venue people get, right? What does Apple make when you, a developer, make an app and put it on the app store for sale, right? They make 30% of whatever comes in and you make 70, right? That seems reasonable. If the GDC did that, they were like, we keep 30%, 70% goes back to the speakers or 70% goes back to the community, right? And, and we give it to like game related charities. We, we, you know, it's good, right? Sounds great. But no, they keep 100% of the profits. Some speakers get paid, I think, like get on a like big speakers, you know? Um, like uh, people who are famous or whatever, right? Uh, you know, uh, uh, Shigeru Miyamoto comes, right? They pay his travel expenses and whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. But most speakers aren't getting paid at all. Um, and those, those famous people are not getting paid commensurate uh, with the kind of take that the GDC is making. I mean, you should go, go look up CMP's financials. The GDC is one of their biggest conference money makers. I mean, they make massive amounts of money on this and they just keep it all for themselves. And they keep it all for themselves. They don't even do the community the, the, the um, favor of putting the lectures up for free afterwards. They refuse to even do that, even though they're making like, I mean, we're talking millions and millions of dollars they're making off this conference. They could not even be um, nice enough to put the lectures up for free after the fact. And uh, they charge $500 for access to the GEC vault, right? Like again, putting up barriers to people learning uh, about game development and it pisses me off because it's like I really just don't you know it, I feel like there's such a lack of awareness of how much harm that's doing I mean don't you want to teach people about game development don't you want to foster this you know kind of thing can't we have a conference where it's not about extracting the maximum amount of money out of the attendees and is instead taking advantage of the fact um, that uh, all of these speakers are willing to speak for free, take advantage of that 
for positive, for a good thing, instead of a company just trying to siphon as much money out of it as possible to pad their own uh, shareholder bottom line, right? Which is what it is, it's a publicly traded company. Um, that's why I was able to look up the financials when I did. Um, so yeah, I have nothing but bad things to say about the treaty. I think it's awful. Um, and I would love to see someone replace uh, that as the, the standard industry conference that was a, a good nonprofit, conf uh, not nonprofit conference that was actually trying to do a good thing as its mission instead of trying to make the most money uh, as its mission because I think it would make a really big difference for people who are trying to learn game development like the kinds of people who come to this stream. Um, and so, you know, I don't know what to say. I have nothing but bad things to say about it, and it, it upsets me, as you can obviously see. And I wish we would do something about it. Uh, it's one of those things that if I ever have time, I would try to do something about myself, but at the moment, I don't, obviously. And so that's where we're at. Give GDC panels. Those are good, right? I think the speakers at GDC are great. I think they're getting exploited, is what I think. Um, I think the fact that people are willing to put together their... Um, you know, even if even if it's someone like Iwata who's, you know, or even if it's someone who's doing it for a corporate reason, I mean, hey, they were out there interacting with the community. I think that's a good thing, you know? Uh, so I don't have any problem with people speaking at the GDC. I have a problem with the GDC. Um, and I don't like to see GDC speakers systematically exploited the way that they are. Um, it's not fair. It's not right. Um, and it shouldn't be that way because, uh, you know, the alternatives, I think, would be very good. The alternatives would be uh, for uh, to take all that money that's getting siphoned out right now and give it back to the community so that either passes could cost a lot less so more people could get in who were, you know, poorer, who could, couldn't, can't afford these, who maybe are beginning game developers, don't have money, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, also, people from foreign countries that may not have, you know, like weak exchange rates. I mean, it's got to be a, a hell of a time paying uh, that kind of money to go to the GDC. You already have to pay to get there, which is, you know, a big deal. I don't know. There's just a lot of things that all that money that's being siphoned off and just going to, a, a, you know, this uh, corporation that does not care at all about game development. Um, all that money could be put to such a much better use for uh, game developers in the community at large. And it's, it's just, it's really unfortunate um, that we've sort of uh, gathered around that this sort of, um, this, uh, this little corporate like cancer nugget. And uh, you know, what can you say? Chris Crawford didn't want it to happen, but uh, he got overruled, so. I guess Chris Crawford got screwed and so did the rest of us. And it's just been a big old screw fest since then.